So, why John D. McDonald? Because he was a very talented writer. Um, I really like his stuff, and I feel like he's not talked about very much uh, anymore. At one time, he was quite popular, but I haven't heard any like modern like crime writers or even older crime writers really talk about him. Um, really, the only writer I can think of that still like talks about him in his own work and also outside of his work is Stephen King. Um, <clears throat> but for those who don't know, uh, John D. McDonald was a very prolific uh, writer of mystery and crime novels. Uh, he started from about the late 40s, early 50s, and worked up to his death in the mid-80s. In that time, he published several novels, um, uh, short stories, uh, most of them crime fiction, and he even published a couple of sci-fi novels. Um, uh, he's most known for a series of novels starring an amateur sleuth named Travis McGee, and all of the McGee novels have colors on the titles. So, uh, the first few in the books would be Nightmare in Pink, The Long Blue Goodbye, uh, later ones would be um, Bright Orange for the Shroud, A Tan and Sandy Silence, The Green Ripper, uh, Free Fall and Crimson, The Lonely Cop, Lonely Copper Sea, Empty Copper Sea, The Lonely Silver Rain, uh, Long Lavender Look, so on and so on. There were several McGee novels, and those are the ones I'm most familiar with. I've read quite a bit of his other stuff, too. Uh, but the Travis McGee novels are my favorite things he's written, and they're the most uh, ones I've read. Um, but for those who also don't know about the Travis McGee series, they're set in Florida. Uh, McDonald lived and worked in Florida, and most of his writing is set in Florida. And uh, Travis McGee is a character he created in the early 60s. Uh, I think the first book in the series came out in 64. And he was writing them up to the McGee series up till uh, the mid 80s. Um, the Lonely Silver Rain is the last one, and it was published in 86, the year um, I'll die. Uh, but Travis McGee, he lives on a boat, like a houseboat, a dock on a pier. Um, he's retired. Uh, he makes money like from solving cases that people bring him. So, let's like, say somebody has a problem, uh, they'll come to him with. You know, a large sum of cash to solve the problem. He'll take on a case, uses a uh, brilliant deduction skills, solve that problem, and reap the benefits. And he lives on that money till it runs out, and is thus the need of another case to solve. So he, you know, and along the way, he hooks up with various women. <laughs> uh, none of them last more than like a single novel. Um, and also, the interesting thing about the series was Travis aged in real time. So he started off, you know relatively young in the early 60s and he actually got older in real time as the books were coming out so he was aging not only with McDonald who was writing them but also with the audience who kept up with them at that period um, it's strange to me that he's forgotten because he was so good he was um, he was very um, realistic he wrote very realistic characters he wrote interesting stories he knew how to write suspense um, <clears throat> He knew how to uh, keep a story moving. He knew how to pace the story well. Um, and I would probably say he was probably influential on a lot of people that came after him. People like Robert B. Parker, um, probably Ross MacDonald even. Uh, and then probably, he's probably even influenced some other writers I don't know about. Some more contemporary people like Harlan Coben or so. Um, I know he actually has had influence on science fiction writer Spider Robinson, which I found out not too long ago, and while Spider writes science fiction, he actually also has a series that pays homage to Travis McGee, and even has similar, like, easter eggs within it that are inspired by McDonald's writing. Um, there's a quote from Kurt Vonnegut that goes somewhat like, uh, the writing of John D. McDonald will be looked on 3,000 years from now the way we look at, like, uh, King Tut's treasure. And I think that's it's there's nothing sad about that to me because I don't hear anyone talk about him. He's kind of like other great writers that I feel have got under the radar, like the brilliant science fiction writer William Slater. Like I don't understand, like why? Why has John D. McDonald been forgotten in time and not someone like Rex Stout? Why not someone like Raymond Chandler or Dashi Hammett? Why? <laughs> why have we forgotten McDonald? But you know, have kept alive Agatha Christie. And before you get on my ass, yes, Agatha Christie's fantastic. She's a wonderful crime writer and 
fantastic mystery writer, and there's a reason that she is well remembered today. But at the same time, MacDonald deserves this recognition as well. Now, he wrote different kinds of mysteries in Agatha Christie, but they were no less good. Shit, I think some of MacDonald's writing was better than on, like, some of the classics of literature. I'd rather read a John D. MacDonald novel than William Faulkner any day of the week. <laughs> yeah, and for those of you out outraged that I said MacDonald's better than Faulkner, you can go fuck yourself. <laughs> I'm just kidding, but I do hate Faulkner. Uh, but no, I mean, in all seriousness, I think he deserves to be remembered. And I think younger generations of crime fans need to read his stuff. You know, I, I don't know if his stuff's still in print or not. I'm sure it is. But honestly, without McDonald, there wouldn't be a lot of writers. There wouldn't be no Carl Heisen. Probably not even, like, Stephen King's writing would probably be, you know, lesser than it is because it was influenced by his writing style. And... I don't know. I also think, just personally, I like that he used lo Florida's location. Florida's an interesting place to be, and it's somewhere I've always wanted to visit. And the way he describes, like, the beaches and the local citizenry, the, the downtown scene, the residents, it all sounds interesting to me, and actually it only fueled my desire to go there. And it's interesting that he, uh, McDonald was an insider and could write about Florida from an insider native's perspective, rather than somebody who just knows a lot about Florida and is writing about it. Much like how Alan Bradley is Canadian, but, you know, writes about England in the Flavie de Luce novels. But that's an entirely different series. <laughs> but anyways, so, I highly recommend you guys reading John D. MacDonald. I think he needs to get out there. He needs to get more recognition. I don't want him to fall through the cracks of time and be forgotten by everybody. I don't want people to, you know, you know, 20, 30, 50, 100 years from now being like, who? Or even not even like bring up the name to say who. Like, I don't know. His stuff's pretty available. Um, you can find it on Amazon. You can also probably find it in thrift shops. I've actually found a, quite a bit of McDonald's novels around my own town and just either on, on giveaway tables at the library or in secondhand bookstores in my own town. So his stuff is out there. You just gotta find it. I wouldn't Probably not readily available, but it is there if you want to do a little digging. But I assure you guys, it is well, well worth the dig. This stuff is fantastic and very, very enjoyable. Like, I can reread his stuff over and over. And he's just such a good mystery writer. And I wanted to give this little shout out video because he deserves, you know, more recognition than he gets now. So, anyways, thanks for watching and sorry to ramble on. And, um,. Yeah, I'll be back in another video soon. So keep keep watching. Thanks for watching anyway, and I appreciate it. And William Faulkner can go fuck himself. Bye.